Okay, so here we are. It is the official opening day of the Second Life 20th birthday, and we are riding the official pod tour. You can see little pod messages trigger in the chat box as we stroll along. And we're just going to let that run in the background. At the moment, the current shared environment is night, and there's a giant plant in front of us and all kind of spacey exhibits all around us. <clears throat> what else have we been working on today? We've been exploring sound some more, and what we did is we took a recording from our phone called Bio Stereo and ran it through a filter. So this is what this looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing and Evolving Spaces, Episode 6, Chapter opening. Today we re-entered by reflecting as discussed. We're working our way back into regular composing for whatever that means, but the series continues evolving into exploring new perspectives and new methods, such as the last month or so spent on that 3D exhibit. So we continue to feel what we call creative dissonance and that we're feeling our way through this. Uh, we like Reaper and Audacity for video editing. We're going to show you, we just showed you Reaper. And interestingly, using the two different audio editing tools reminds us of having two different file structures for our projects, depending on what we're doing, either exhibit content or music compositions. Also, we're telling ourselves we need to do recaps frequently again. This is the second chapter of this episode, and we're doing a recap because we've got ideas for the next episode that this would just, we need to clear the decks. So um, in terms of image tools, uh, we worked on that in the last episode, and we summarized there's two ways to take a GIF, an animated GIF file from offline and turn it into an animation online in 3D platform. We've tested one, we have another one to test. Uh, working with our sound tools, we verified that our phone recordings have two different tools and they record in different formats. One is called M4A and the other is called MP3. And Vegas, Audacity, and Reaper can read M4A, which apparently is an old Apple format that is used to this day on Macs. And we were able to split the stereo recording into a left and a right track, which is going to be used for further spatial effects. However, for MP3 that comes from our phone, Reaper cannot read it. So we think that we need a different MP3 encoder for Reaper, so it's on our list. We explored what we called Bayou Stereo Sound, and we explored a composition that we made in MuseScore. So we're going to focus on that to bring us home. The first thing that we're doing here is exploring the frequency spectrum. And in our musical exhibit, uh, we showed this quite a bit. We showed this quite a bit. Well, we're not going to show it here, are we? Not unless we hop over there. And we like using something called a frequency spectrogram. You can tell that the regions are crowded. But a frequency spectrogram basically along the bottom of the axis is time. And on the vertical axis is like 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz, 30 megahertz, 40 megahertz, and like that. And wherever you see either intense, wherever you see an intense color, like at the bottom here, or at the bottom here, it's loud. Those frequencies are loud, and then up here, those frequencies are softer. So this is not your traditional, you know, audio waveform where the height of it is the loudness. Instead, the brightness of the image is the loudness. So we, we showed you that a trumpet is very loud in the low frequencies, but the brass trumpet is louder at multiples of those frequencies as well. So we're continuing to explore that way of looking at sound. On the left-hand side, this is a frequency spectrogram. And you can see it's just about solid red with some green at the top. And we're running it through what's called a bandpass filter, which is taking the, all the low frequencies and the high frequencies and and filtering them out and leaving only the middle frequencies. And that's what's over here. Now it's kind of hard to see, but if we slide this over, boy, 
boy, is that hard to see. We keep threatening to use the screenshot that we took. Yeah, there at the bottom right, you see it's it's gotten a little more, uh, it's lighter. It's not quite as red as over here. So it's letting it's letting the middle through, but it's kind of attenuating the bottom, the top, and the bottom. So that's called a bandpass filter, and um, we don't care so much about filtering it, although people do it all the time. What we care about is uh, understanding it in terms of timbres. So this is a piano being played at uh, piano two octaves high, middle C, and two octaves low. So if you solo the high piano, you hear this. See how it's very bright, higher in the spectrum? Down here, this is the middle. And it's bright halfway down. And then this is the, the two octaves low. So its brightness is way down here. So basically we're doing kind of an, a manual splitting of the three things to make it much more blatantly obvious that, that there's a high frequency, a middle frequency, and a low frequency. The trick always being that for every frequency that plays, all of the multiples can play as well. And so what makes an instrument sound different is uh, which of them stand out, which, which of them are brighter than others. So this one is very bright at the high end, and this is very bright at the low frequency end. And when you put them together, and that gives a different kind of a sound than mixing it up with the middle. It's, it's, a, it's a frequency separation. It's not stereo. It's some kind of other dimension. And that's what interests us about sound, is looking at the dimensions of uh, expressing yourself musically. Now, that was piano, which has a very quick um, die out. Here we go. See, the height dies out and is gone. The middle's longer, and the bass lasts the longest. And so that's a time-dependent change in the mixture of sound. So if you hit all those piano keys at once, this would have been hitting three keys at once. Bing! Um, over time, it changes. Now, there's a specific patch called a sweep synthesizer that will change over time, and this is it. So let's just play the, it's the same notes at the high on a sweep synth. Now, this doesn't die out. This is the bottom. And it has an artificially built in. You hear it got louder and softer and louder and softer. And you can see where it got louder, where it got uh, brighter here in the low frequencies. There. There. And there's a little bit of stereo left-right tilt going on here because the upper channel is left and the bottom channel is right. And then finally, if you listen to the middle, it sounds like this. Now that's pretty, looks pretty steady. And if you put all three together, not only do you have a high, middle, low, but you have a varying uh, volume, and then you have a uh, built-in varying left-right. So these are more complex textures. And even then, the bass still tends to stand out a little bit longer. Very rich sound, reminds us of an orchestra tuning, right? So as we said, this is a built-in 
synthesized sound on our uh, MuseScore program. Uh, and what we really like about exploring audio sp frequency spectrum is this is how you tell the difference in um, cambers, and it's also how you can tell the difference in how letters are pronounced. We talked about this the other day. This is a long O as in home, and this is in top as in op. Oh. Uh, so try that again. O. 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 Now usually this plays within a second, but now let's try the ooh uh. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. Uh. And the i. 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 I'm sorry. I the i. I. And the e a, e and the a a, a a, and those are very different. There's a big gap in there, and it's more filled in here. So the the long vowels uh, a and e have have this uh, gap in there, and it's filled in with the a a, and over here the short i e. e, e. There's something similar going on in how our uh, our mouth shape vibrates there. That's what's going on. And then the O and the O. Now they sound similar, but even then there's a little bit more going on in the top here than there is over here. So this concludes um, today's episode. Uh, we already mentioned what we like about it. Our ideas for next time are... Uh, well, we've got a bunch of miscellaneous ideas. Um, ideas. Well, we're kind of thinking of going on a nice tour of the uh, exposition now that it's open. And uh, there, there's quite a list of... Um, oh, there's the pod. Quick, jump on the pod. So you can just ride this pod around any way you want. But we thought what we would do is a little more guided than that, and we would... Um, Look for all the exhibits that involve that same music in their title and description, 3D in their title and the description, and dance in their title and the description. So that's our idea. Shout outs to later viewer, methodic innovator, and silent lurker, and CJ Shots stopped by. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.